and I wanted to celebrate today. You know, I, I think we can get to a point in our life where we need a whole lot more celebration. Amen, right? If you look at the world around us, there is so much negativity, there, there is so much divisiveness that is happening around here. So I, I wanted to find a reason for us to celebrate. Now, first, we can easily to celebrate the 136 years that Royce City First United Methodist Church has been active and alive in this community. Even before Royce City was a city, this church was here. We worshiped with, I believe, the Baptist and the Christians in, in the schoolhouse uh, when we first got started. Then I believe, oh, I forgot to write, 1890, 1889, 1890, Dolores? 1887 was when we built the first sanctuary. And, and that, that sanctuary, Dolores pointed out to me this morning, if you go down to the food pantry and right across the street from the food pantry, that is where the first sanctuary of Royce City First United Methodist Church was. And then we out quickly grew that building. If you saw on social media, I, I put a picture of that very first sanctuary. And then this was built in 1904 and has been here as a beacon of hope, a beacon of love, a beacon of God's grace for our community throughout so many things, World War I, World War II. It was a beacon of hope as the, uh, what, what once was called Oak Grove Church became the, uh, the first Methodist Episcopal South Church. And then shortly, right, right around World War II, merged with the Episcopal North Church again and became one Methodist church. And then finally, in 1968, there was a merger between the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren Church that, that gave us the United Methodist Church. There's been a lot that's gone on during that time frame. And th there's been a lot that has happened that, that, that I'm sure that, that each and every one of you, e even if you weren't a, a lifetime resident of Royce City, you can look back in your own life and you can go, man, there is a lot that has gone on. But there's one thing that is constant. There's one thing that is true, and that is the love and grace of Jesus Christ that has held us through all of that. So as I was thinking about this message today, I was thinking about what, what scripture could we share that, that, that can help us see the journey of this church, the, the journey of, of the people of this church. And the scripture that, that, that came up time and time again to me was the scripture from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. I know we have it printed in the uh, bulletins, if you would like to follow along this morning. Hear the word of the Lord. And Jesus is in the middle of, of sharing some parables to his listeners. And he shares those parables to each and every one of us. And he tells them another parable. He says, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it's the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, you have gathered your people. And we gather here on, on this spot, that this holy ground, coming, expecting to hear a word from you. So, Lord, we pray that as we spend this time together, you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So I don't know if this happened to you whenever you were in elementary school. This has happened in, in second grade. And, and I looked forward to it because when I was in kindergarten and first grade, I, I saw the second graders taking something home 
and I was looking forward to the day that I got to take one of these things home. And it was a tree. It, it, it was one of these little sprigs of a tree that looked like a little branch, you know, that, that, that you could just pull off of a tree, but it had a little bulb in it. And, and, and the task that we were given was to, uh, to plant that tree at home. Now, I was excited to do that. I don't think my mom and dad were very much excited, but I, I didn't relent, and, and we planted that tree in the backyard. And, and I was a very, very impatient and, well, not that smart of a second grader. I would go out to that tree every day to see how much it would grow. Because I, I wanted to play in the tree that I had. And I said, like, wouldn't that be great? And I remember mom and dad saying, Chris, you probably will never get to climb in that tree. Or if you do, you'll be like the age you are right now, 49 years old, because it's not going to be able to hold you or, or, or do anything for you until it has time to mature. And then one day it happened. My brother and I, we were out playing in the backyard, and I think we were throwing a football around or playing tag or something. I can't remember exactly what we did, but I do remember that I wasn't paying attention, and I just mowed right over my tree. And it, it, it came out because I guess I didn't plant it well enough, and, and it just, just was destroyed. But I decided to go ahead and just take that tree and, and just to get rid of it. And I'm kind of glad we did because, man, it would have really messed up that backyard. But, you know, trees are important. I think one of the first things that I saw happen today as you all started to come is that you all went directly to the shade of the tree. I think I heard Ben Cherry said, yeah, we got here early so we could uh, have first dibs on the tree. So congratulations, Ben. We're glad that you were able to do that. No, the tree, trees are so important, and trees played a very important role in Scripture. Going all the way back to Genesis chapter 2, we, we hear about two trees, right? We hear about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the tree that Adam and Eve ate from, and then we hear from the tree of life. But then if we go all the way to the very end of the book, to, to Revelation chapter 22, what do we see there? We see the tree of life again. That, that, that Jesus is saying is going to be here, that that's going to restore or, or make things even better than it was for the life that we have while we are here. You know, if we look at most of the major biblical characters, their stories have something to do with a tree. Moses. The burning bush. We we'll go back even further. Noah, what happened to him? He, he was there on the ark, and, and an olive branch was brought to him to let him know that the flood was almost over. Well, when we go into the New Testament, one of those songs that, that I loved to sing when I was little was about a guy by the name of Zacchaeus who, who climbed up a sycamore tree. As we know, before Jesus was arrested and taken and crucified, the disciples and Jesus would hang out in the Mount of Olives around all of the olive trees that were there. And then, of course, when it comes to our Savior, Jesus Christ, we know that he died on a cross made from a tree. But, but as we get to our verse... We see that Jesus is bringing this up again, words about a tree. But, but it's not just any tree. He's talking about the seed of a mustard tree and, and how this mustard tree would be a, a place where birds will be able to land a, and nest. Now, if you're familiar with Scripture, you'll know that what Jesus is doing here, he, he's, he's trolling the Pharisees, because the Pharisees have in mind a, a certain tree that, that birds will, will nest in. We go all the way to Ezekiel chapter 17, verse 23. God says to Ezekiel, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young 
twigs, a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. And on this mountain, the height of Israel, will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird in the shade of its branches. Birds of every sort will nest there. Wada was talking about the mustard tree. And, and if you haven't seen a mustard tree, it is not a very pretty tree. It, it looks more like, like weeds than anything else. So, so what Jesus is giving this example of a mustard tree or a mustard seed and how it will grow and birds will nest at a tree, he is saying, look, I am getting ready to do something different. Something far different than, than you may know, something far more that, than you may understand. But it will happen through me. See, if you also li listen to that verse about Ezekiel, you see the prophecies of Jesus being lifted up himself. So what is it that Jesus is wanting his listeners at us to pick up about the mustard seed? I think the first thing they realize is that, that Jesus takes uncommon things and, and he elevates them that was one of the purposes of his parables he, he would use these parables to give us these everyday ordinary things for for us to see and, and then he would elevate them to a point that his glory would be seen through it well, well, well the cedars of lebanon they were beautiful and, and they were amazing trees they were actually the trees that were used and brought in to build the temple there in jerusalem jesus is saying look i am going to do something even more amazing than the temple with a mustard tree I am going to do something that, that will show and share my love and my light in a way that will outshine and will outreach anything that the temple will be able to do. I will become that temple. You see how he did that? He took this everyday, ordinary event, and, and he shared it in a way to show a greater truth that we all hold on to even today. The second thing about the, about the mustard seed, about the, the mustard seed, at the time it was probably the smallest seed, but it could be so prolific. And what I mean by that is that when the seed got wet, if, if animals were to run through where these mustard seeds were, it, it would get stuck to their coats. And, and, and as they took off, as they went somewhere else, they would dry off, and then they would fall in other places. When the Pharisees would, would plant their gardens, they wanted to make sure that the mustard seed didn't get anywhere near their, their holy gardens because then it would just take it over, and it would ruin what they had planted the story is saying that, that the mustard seeds that, that have traveled all over the world, they, weren't, they didn't travel on purpose, but they just got a hold of the other crops that were brought. And then as they came, they were planted there. See, it's a reminder to us that, that the word of God is so powerful. It is so prolific that, that it, it takes nothing, or it's just saying nothing can stop the word of God from growing. There is nothing that can stop the proclamation of God's word to the world around us. Sometimes I think, we think, or maybe I should say I think, that if I don't do something, God's word won't be proclaimed. But no, it will be. Because it's not because of who I am, it's because of who he is. Before the service started, I was here, and, and Dean and I, we went and got, prayed before the worship service was over, and I came out, and I started to get busy. I started to do this thing and that thing. And Dean said, Pastor Chris, get away from here. Go, go sit down. 
well, no, I'm, I'm just going to go do this. No, 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 no. You don't need to do this. This is not about you. This is not about you. This is about God. And, and the people of God will be the ones that will do the work. How easy it is to think and get stuck in that trap. Think that if it's the old saying that we use to build up the American dream, if it's, about, if it's supposed to be, then it's up to me. But maybe we should change that. So that if it's supposed to be, it's up to thee. If it's supposed to happen, God will provide for those things to happen. <laughs> I think this is the point of the mustard seed or the mustard tree that really got to me this morning. Is that the mustard seed can grow back quickly. The mustard tree, no matter what happens to it, has a way of growing back even bigger and better than it was before. It doesn't matter how harsh or, or how deep that you, you prune the mustard tree, it will come back. It, it will come back and continue to produce the fruit that it was meant to, pru to, to, to produce. I think we can think about the church in the past 136 years. And without naming anything in specific, we know that the church has had extremely rough times. But the church has gone through moments that, that have hurt the church deeply. Moments that have divided the church. Moments that has drawn people away from the church. But the good thing about the mustard seed and, and the lesson that we can have from the mustard seed or, or the mustard tree is that even though it may be pruned time and time again or, or, or it may look like it has been destroyed by, by storms or, or by arguments or by, by disasters because of the faithfulness of God, it will grow again. Because of the faithfulness of God, it will continue to, to give shade to the birds of the area. It will provide fruit for those birds to eat. It will provide a way for the message and love and grace of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed so that he may be praised. <laughs> You know, today is not just a day that we celebrate the heritage of our church. We also celebrate communion. And today is World Communion Sunday. And when we talk about World Communion Sunday, it's a reminder to us that as we gather here outside on the corner of Highway 66 and Josephine Street, there are other Christians that are gathering all over the world, and they are celebrating the gift of communion. They are celebrating the gift that God continues to pour out on each one of us so that we may then be witnesses of God's love and grace to the world around us. I hope we think about the mustard seed. I hope we think about the love and the grace that God continues to pour out on each and every one of us. And I also pray that when we have those moments of pruning in our lives, when we have the possibility of a lightning strike that, that takes out something that is dear to us, any type of disaster, we know that God will continue to build up in us so that his word may be proclaimed. Thank you.